Hey, Kentucky, this is Mary Jo Perino. Tonight, Lexington leaders reconvene to talk about issues of racial inequality. A Franklin County candidate fires up a marijuana bowl during a live debate, and UK lays out a fall return plan. All that and more is next on Hey, Kentucky. Welcome to Hey, Kentucky with LEX 18 Sports Director Keith Farmer. How are you, Keith? I'm smiling from ear to ear because I think we're going to have football season. I know. I, I, I feel it. We're going to get into that in a minute, too. Uh, let's start with this, though. Lexington leaders continue to hear from the community amid protests over racial injustices. The Urban County Council held the first of two virtual meetings today. They discussed yesterday's announcement from Mayor Linda Gordon of an immediate moratorium on so-called no-knock police warrants, except in life and death cases. Police Chief Lawrence Weathers weighed in on the decision for the first time, saying he still believes in using the warrants for those extreme situations of life and death. Most of today's session focused on post-incident police disciplinary matters and how that might look going forward. Uh, Keith, President Trump today even talking about making a nationwide database, database of uh, police infractions. Which I believe is something that everybody really is is looking for to keep the the police accountable. So this could be a very good idea. And again, a lot, all this is just starting the conversation towards making this uh, a better world. Yes, I agree. All right, one Western Kentucky tattoo parlor is among those using ink to unite communities by offering free appointments to anyone who wants to cover up their hate or gang symbol tattoos. In Callaway County, tattoo artists at the Gallery X Art Collective say they decided to offer the service as a way to take a stance in the Black Lives Matter movement amid the protests calling for an end to police brutality and racial injustice. Jennifer Tucker was the first customer to take advantage. She says she only got a Confederate flag tattoo to disobey her dad and to fit in. I went to Livingston County. Everybody there flies rebel flags. My daughter gave me a hug and was like, I'm really proud of you, Mom, that you're taking that off of you. Since posting on Facebook about the free cover-ups a couple of weeks ago, the shop has received over two dozen requests, and they continue to pour in. Keith, we talked about this yesterday. Find your talent and use that to make the world a better place. I think this is fantastic. I think it's a brilliant idea just to offer your services for this and uh, obviously there's been people taking uh, this tattoo parlor up on it. Um, now if we can just get some of those 20-something uh, spring break tattoos covered up, uh, all will be right with the world. <laughs> yeah, there, uh, who didn't get a tattoo to make their dad mad? That's, that, was, that would have been the only reason I'd get one. All right, turning to Kentucky politics, one local candidate apparently decided to fire up his marijuana pipe during a recent online debate. During a live candidate forum featuring people fighting for votes in the Frankfurt City Commissioner's race, Tim Childers advocated for the legalization of marijuana. Let's give any business, first year business, a waiver for three years that don't have to turn that government paper so they can incubate and grow. You're talking to man, I own commercial property. I own it, I own everything. I, I don't owe the bank any mortgage payments. Also, I own Kentucky Reaper. How about this, you all? Let's, leave, let's go get some state and legalize something. Big money in that, but the state's doing it. I have yes. the answer. Candidate with solutions, people. Vote 10, Tim Children. The 49-year-old Frankfurt native originally ran for mayor in his hometown back in 2016, but received the least number of votes during the primary. He then initially planned to run for Senate, but ultimately decided to start his political career as a commissioner and work his way up from there. Keith, uh, I don't know that this is, <laughs> this, this is going to garner him a ton of support. Uh, I think we found our new Gatewood Galbraith, um, and, and the look on the moderator's face was priceless. I don't know if we got to see it there. If you haven't, go look at the video and just look at how stunned she was with a big old smile on her face. It was pretty funny. Yeah, it is. it's funny. You know what? If nothing else, maybe we could all just hang out. He seems like a pretty cool guy. I just don't know if he's uh, going to be a good city commissioner. Anyways, as expected, the University of so. Kentucky has released a more detailed plan for its fall return. Among the highlights, in-person classes beginning a week early on August 17th and ending at Thanksgiving.
testing for students for COVID-19, plus a daily assessment for symptoms and mask wearing in most places on campus, working with populations considered high risk for contracting the virus, and contact tracing and quarantining when incidents of the virus occur. Until we have um, real treatments and a vaccine, a lot of it is going to be about your behavior and what you feel as a responsibility to your brothers and sisters. Are you going to be their keeper? What you're doing is a model for everyone around you. All right, meanwhile, UK freshmen, members of the football team have moved in. They're the first group of students to use the residence hall since the pandemic closed the Lexington campus in March. And Keith, uh, some football news today. They are moving up the first game of the season to September 3rd. That's a Thursday night, so there's no conflict with the Kentucky Derby. I have a feeling they're, they're planning for this uh, you know, September 3rd date. They're planning on football game one. I guess if it doesn't happen, now you get a couple of more days to pick up to get ready for that second game if they do end up, you know, canceling that first game. But uh, in any case, I think it's sounding good with everybody having the, you know, the courage to move it up to September 3rd and, and have those games and be ready to go. And they even get a couple extra days of walkthroughs now that, that got passed. So uh, they're going to get a couple extra weeks, I should say, to, to, to work out for that first game. Yeah, it's it's feeling more and more like we will see some football. Meanwhile, Louisville, Louisville's athletic director is also expressing optimism about football this fall. In his latest update to UofL's Athletic Association, Vince Tyree indicated there is growing optimism that the season will kick off on time. He cited what Keith just said, uh, a move by the NCAA is a promising sign. The Cards will be able to play NC State on September 3rd. As scheduled, last week the Oversight Committee, committee finalized a plan for an extended preseason, including two additional weeks for teams to hold walkthroughs. And, and Keith, they, they need that. They, they need that. I mean, you think about it, they, they didn't even get a spring practice. I mean, you know, very little anyway. Um, the coaches haven't really been able to be around them other than to push them on Zoom. So I think they do need that little extra time uh, to get ready for the start of the season. And we never know, like, if there's going to be players testing positive, how, how this will all work. So I like having two extra weeks of everybody together just to see how it's going to shake down. Yeah. All right. Up next on Hey Kentucky, we're going to revisit the recent settlement involving Brady Industries. A reporter who's been following the Boyd County saga for years will tell us what might lie ahead for the troubled aluminum mill project. Stay with us.